Hey everyone, it is spring of 2020 and we are in full lockdown mode uh, everywhere in the world. And if you are watching this video, I hope you guys are all safe and healthy wherever you are. Those who follow the channel uh, can see that the garage has gone through a transformation. I will have a video out in a few months of the before and after of the garage renovation. In this video, I wanted a new project that required minimal tools and was easy to do for anyone. All you will need is a handsaw uh, or power saw to cut a 1 and 1 8 inch dowels that will be the legs for this flower pot. Uh, later in this video, I will show you how I designed the pot in Fusion 360. So I am currently squaring up the ends of the dowel as it was scrap piece from a previous project. Um, I am doing my best right now to saw straight and cutting this dowel down to approximately 13 inches in length, but the desired length is really up to you. Um, the saw that I'm using is a Japanese dovetail saw called a dozuki. If you don't have a hand saw uh, and would like to purchase one, I recommend purchasing a Ryoba. Uh, as your first saw. I'll have a link below for you. Um, it is very similar to the saw, but it has teeth for both ripping and cross cuts and better for general woodworking. To accurately measure the same length of the dowel, I am using a utility knife as a marking knife. I line the blade up with the cut the dowel and transfer the edge to the new dowel uh, to cut accurately and straight. To saw accurately and straight with a saw, I'm using my thumb as a guide and then placing the blade on my mark and lightly pushing the saw forward until it feels seated in the cut, then pulling back to make a deeper cut. This is a great project to practice sawing as it isn't super critical for the dowel to be perfectly perpendicular and flat. If you wanted to get them super flat together, you could line them up like this and just sand the tops down with a block and that would get them a little bit closer if you want. So here in Fusion 360, I am first creating a sketch and drawing a circle uh, that's roughly, I think, 200 and uh, 203 millimeters, which is roughly eight inches. So I wanted the flower pot to be eight inches wide and extruding it up right now to eight inches tall. But if you guys are designing your own flower pot, you could create how tall or how round you guys want. Uh, the only real uh, important thing is to make sure that the dowel size you guys are using is um, the correct one to what you have. Um, so for here, I'm making, I'm going to the bottom and creating a new sketch, and I'll be adding my dowel in. Uh, the circle is um, 29 millimeters. Yeah, so it's, I think uh, the original is 28, and I gave it 29 for small tolerance. So, but this is the most important part: is when you make your circle, you don't want to put the center on the edge. You want to tuck it into the body a little bit more because you want the indent inside the flower pot to hold the dowel when you slide it in. If it's too close to the center, it'll have the indent, but your dowels will just fall out. So the closer you put it in, uh, the more it'll hold, but the less you'll see around the flower pot. So uh, just, just tuck it in a little bit. And then what I did was I uh, extruded up and cut into the body of the pot and that's where the dowels will sit in. Uh, you guys can play around with how much you guys want to push it up. Um, you, you might want to you know just come in at the bottom or get pretty close to the top. The design's really up to you. Um, so what I'm using now is pattern. Uh, so I'm taking I'm selecting um, the dowel cut in that I did and telling Fusion that I want to replicate this pattern around this one axis. So I want to spin it around and I want it to replicate three times. So that way I am getting the exact cut in on the other two sides that I did on the first side. So I don't have to create a circle and extrude. So the pattern's really a um, powerful tool in that it kind of just does a lot of the work for you. And here I am basically um, going around the edges and anything that's sharp, I'm just giving a, a round fillet to. Again, this is kind of uh, me, I think I was doing around two or three millimeter roundovers, but really you guys can um, round it over as much as you guys want.
So it's pretty simple. I'm just going around here and command clicking to add to my selections and it's automatically selecting my um, my value of I think three millimeters and going around. And then now I'm going to the bottom and giving the bottom a much larger round over. So I'm trying to just select just the edge. So I'm selecting three main and then just pulling it up about 15, where did I go? 10 millimeters. I think I ended up redesigning this, but um, yeah, I added a lot more. So uh, with this bottom roundover for 3D printing, you just have to be careful about um, having supports because the roundovers are past 45 degrees. So sometimes it's really hard to print uh, with nothing underneath it. Uh, so you, you get a little bit of rough uh, surface texture. So this part, I, uh, I use shell, the shell modifying to create the uh, emptying out the solid object to create uh, basically the, the, the pot itself, the hole. I, I did a five millimeter wall in this video, but I ended up going back when I was slicing to create a thinner wall, so it printed a little bit quicker. Uh, so I, I ended up going around two to three millimeters and it was very, very solid still. So when you guys create your own, Two millimeters, three millimeters, fine. Just do three walls on your on your uh, prints and maybe four bottom walls, and it, it'll be watertight. So if you uh, at this point you're done with the model, you could export it the STL and start printing it. But uh, right here, I am just um, I want I'm adding in dowels to get the appearance and changing the colors and playing around with the length of the dowels and just seeing um, if the lengths I cut looked good in my design. So if you just want to, you know, you could skip ahead or you could just watch uh, how I actually end up um, giving this thing the, the final look of what it actually is supposed to look like. So I played around with the colors of the pot and here I'm creating dowels and using the same pattern to duplicate the dowels and putting it in the same three spots of where the indents are. So this original design was based off of um, kind of a mid-century modern flower pot so you, you see on plant stands, but I always thought that the stand could be incorporated into the flower pot. And so I tried different colors of, uh, generally a lot of those are white pots and I wanted to try a darker pot to see what it would look like. So here you see this is what the actual pot kind of looks like, but the whole thing's gray. So now I'm going to start giving it some wood texture to give it more of a visual of how it's really going to be. So the idea is, you know, you could try to use any kind of exotic woods too, uh, if you get dowels from your lumber yard or big box store. But, you know, there's a lot of possibilities with how you guys might want to design a flower pot like this. Um, and also you could change the colors of the, the pot itself. You could try layer changing colors, um, wild different colors. I think it's, you know, there's a lot of creativity that could be put into um, actually the appearance of this, let alone changing the shape of the flower pot with uh, these dowels fitting into the flower pot itself. So here we're watching uh, the print getting done. Uh, if you guys like this video, please hit that thumbs up and subscribe. Uh, also hit that alert icon to be alerted when new videos come out. I don't release a new video often, so I promise you, you won't be spammed all the time. And if you'd like to keep up with what I do in between videos, check out my Instagram at 3DDIYDave. So this is the end of the print and the model starting to physically come together with the dowels. And this is the, the most exciting part of actually seeing that my dowels fit in there and the pot can be standing on its own. I think this is a great project for you guys to learn fusion on. You can see it, um, it took me only you know 10 minutes to really put this whole thing together in fusion. And uh, if you have a Prusa printer or an eight by eight bed, you can print, it, print an eight inch pot easily and if you don't have a 3d printer and you really like this design and you want to support myself and the channel um, you could DM me and um, I am 
uh, I've got a lot of inquiries through Instagram of people wanting this flower pot. So just uh, DM me through Instagram or through YouTube, and I can work out a private sale with you guys of uh, purchasing a flower pot. But if you do have a 3D printer, I definitely recommend you guys learning Fusion and trying to make one of these for yourself. Thanks for watching, guys. Thank you.